Hi Church family, Pastor Eric coming to you today with the Word from the Word. And on this Friday, it's um, the last of my three reflections around Pastor John's sermon on uh, the last weekend as we were looking at 1 Thessalonians. No, we finished Thessalonians. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And he is telling them that he wants to come and he wants to help them find the godly path. Um, He's described to them that he doesn't he doesn't want to shame them, that he's there for their good, that his underlying motive is love. It's always love and should be whenever we're looking to discipline somebody. But uh, he says something that's kind of revealing. In the, in the last verse, he says, Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline, or shall I come in love with a gentle spirit? So what's he saying? Straighten up and I'll come back and give you a nice visit? Or um, I need to I need to beat you with an inch of your life. I I don't think he's talking about either one, but what he is talking about is the idea of discipline, the the concept that those who are given charge for someone else need to extra exercise wisdom in how they discipline those folks. When something is wrong, you can't just ignore it. It's it's not something that is going to result in good. There's an old saying in baseball. It's uh, don't practice mistakes. The idea that if you don't correct something you're doing wrong, you're going to keep doing it wrong. Uh, there's no reason to change. Now, Paul is telling them, he said, like any good parent, there's a couple of ways we can go about this. One is that uh, I can come and invoke discipline of a harsh nature. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that discipline should be painful. Uh, because later on it will produce a harvest of righteousness. If it doesn't have effect, if you if you give somebody a discipline that, that doesn't cost them anything, what, what reason do they have to change? They don't. They don't have any reason to change whatsoever. So now discipline can come in a lot of different forms. It can be um, carrot or stick, if you will. And he uses the idea of rod because that's how they would administer discipline amongst flocks and and uh, the ways that they would keep the people in line. So he talks about a rod of discipline. In other words, there's the discipline of taking away something, the discipline of imposing something, uh, a loss of privilege or the imposition of a uh, an extra duty or, or chore or something like that. That's one sort of discipline. Um, the other sorts of, of discipline are the idea that are more... Um, carrot oriented. In other words, uh, things like, I want us to be in a great relationship and I'm going to be very disappointed and we're going to have something between us unless we can both get on the same page. And and in fact, that needs to be God's page, not, not our own page. So he's saying, should I come with the things I impose or with uh, a, a gentle spirit that, that draws you to me uh, in love? Now, both of them both of them are love. See, some people tend to think that one or the other is good and one or the other is bad. Uh, some people think that if uh, you if you spare the, the rod, you spoil the child and that, that uh, discipline should always be imposing something. Um, that's not necessarily true. You need to do whatever it takes within biblical limits to bring about change, to bring repentance, which means a change of thinking, and to bring a uh, behavioral change, the pursuit of Christ, to turn from that which is bad and turn to that which is good. That's what repentance means. That's what it means. It literally means to turn away from or to change one's thinking. And if that means a, a, a great heart-to-heart -heart talk changes thinking and changes behavior, then that's the right thing to do. If, on the other hand, that's not going to work, then you might have to impose something. Now, in the church, um, we have opportunity to draw people to Christ and true righteous living through the preaching of the word, through relationship, through the things that we have. And unfortunately, there's also church discipline where we impose restrictions and limitations. And for us, that's, that's something we prefer not to do. It's not, what, not our first choice. But we want to do whatever God will do, whatever God would choose to help somebody become more like Jesus Christ. Well, which would you prefer? And pray for wisdom that when you are called to correct someone else, that you would understand which one you are called to, that both need to be founded in love. If you don't have a heart for love, 
you don't have a heart for, for invoking discipline at all. This coming weekend, I'm going to preach on 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to talk very specifically about this process and how we can apply it in our church and in our lives and personally in our relationships. So I look forward to seeing you then. God bless. Have a great rest of the day.